grinding suitors like take me, so I roll the dice. Look up to no one else, but your house shot. Yeah, I got real power. Hebrew is a lie. I got a coward here with them tools that swallow their food, digest them like they are spitting back up and chew it. So when they third, they get all of the nutrients. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got pig and food. I kind of swallow that thing down. It is unclean unto you. You shall not eat of their flesh. The Lord commanded us not to eat of their Right, so it's a righteous thing, right? Give me uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 13. Right, 2 and 14. Right, what about some of the stuff that comes from the sea? Do you eat fish? All right, so what type of uh, seafood do you like to eat? I mean, I don't eat a lot of it, but I eat shrimp. Uh, I eat, like, tilapia. Uh, yeah, fish. Yeah, uh, just like that. Sometimes. Yeah. I got you. I read that. Verse 9. These you shall eat of all that are in the water. Because would you eat a rope since? You wouldn't, right? right? Do you know what roaches are known for doing? Yeah, they bottom feed. They crawl up among the floor and they eat all of the scraps and stuff that we don't want to eat. Yeah, right? Eat. All that have fins and scales shall you eat. And whatsoever have not fins and scales. Do, do crabs got fins and scales? Do shrimp got fins and scales? Right, read that verse again. And whatsoever have not fins and scales. So the Lord said at first everything that has fins and scales you can eat of it, right? You can partake. But there are certain things that don't have fins and scales, like shrimp, like crab, lobster, catfish, even though it's sometimes, right, read. You may not eat. It is unclean unto you. It is unclean unto you. The Lord said that that stuff is disgusting. Right. And that's like if you took a broom, and I say this all the time, you kind of swept the floor up and then left the bottom of it. That's the same thing as eating a roach. Because they crawl along the sea floor and they eat all of the scraps and the waste material that they consume. Right? And then we put that stuff in our body. That's why people got high blood pressure, we got diabetes, we got the gout, and we got all of these unhealthy circumstances that befall our people because of the things that we're taking. So the Lord said for that cause, He never wants you to eat something again. Now find what you says. You want to give up for the most high? I'll put it to the most high. Right, Sanctuary. And the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. What says that is for medicine? So a lot of times what they do is they have you like eating marijuana or I don't know if y'all deal with CBD. Y'all heard it? Yeah. So they eat like marijuana and stuff like that. But the thing with marijuana, the Lord just said that it's medicinal. That's like you wouldn't go and get chemotherapy if you didn't have cancer. So why are you eating marijuana if you're not sick? The only reason that it gets you high is because it's supposed to attack, attack an infirmity. But if you don't have an infirmity for it to attack, it's going to malfunction and therefore it's going to attack your brain cells and get you high. Right. So that's that's the science behind marijuana and why we shouldn't be eating it unless you got like glaucoma or some type of sickness whereas you need that type of stuff. Right? But uh, what we going to do, brother, we're going to actually show you who you are. Uh, we're going to show you a true nationality. Do you do the right chapter 32 and verse 6, man? Right, because we done been robbed of our nationality. Right. We done been robbed of our heritage. Right. right, they, huh? 32 and 7. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 7. Yeah. Remember the days of old. Remember, remember the days, days of old. old. It says remember the days of old. Now that's not talking about slavery. Right, because when we look back on slavery, ain't nothing good about slavery. Right. Ain't nothing good about black or Hispanic history. Because all of our history, when you deal with, uh, what is it, February and Black History Month, it's all dealing with slavery, poverty, and being destroyed as a people. So what the Lord is saying is, I want you to look beyond that, right, Reed? Consider the years of many generations. We gotta figure out who were we before we came over here and became black people. Now let me ask you, how did we get over here? Hey, we gotta, sometimes you gotta say it, huh? Right, how do we get over here? On ship, right? Now what happened after we get off the ship? Have we ever been back home? Oh, right. I read that. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 16. No. The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Because the Lord is going to bring us into Egypt with ships. Now, when you look at Israel and you look at Egypt, there is no water except for Radio 2. So this Egypt, give me Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8, Bible Kishai. Revelation 11 and 8. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. Yo! And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. No, it's going to be a great city. Now this great city is talking about a country, read. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. This place is going to be known. Sodom, Sodom had a mass amount of homosexuality, right? Right, read. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Sodom and Egypt. Because Egypt was known for bondage or slavery. So what place on this earth is known for like pride fest and is known for the most slavery in the history of the world? 
That would be American. So we're going to read this again, but we're going to say American instead of Egypt. Like, that's what this talking about. Or shall bring thee into America again with ships. With ships. With ships. Or says he was going to bring us up here with ships, man. Right? I'm reading this out of the Bible. All right, read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemy. What happened when we got off the ship? I ain't sold you for the nearest dollar, man. For the nearest ten cent. All right, read. For bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. That word buy just means redeem. All right, so how else are we living as a people? I right, read that in Job. Look at Job chapter 15, verse... 15, and verse 28. Uh -huh. And he dwelleth in desolate cities, uh -huh. and in houses which no man inhabits. Right, it says that we dwelling in desolate cities and in places that nobody would want to live. Who are the people that are living like that? That's only us. Right, we the ones in the hood. Even when you go into what the ghetto is, Right, they called the ghetto after the so-called white Jews over there when they were uh, going through the Holocaust and stuff like that. So the term ghetto is means place where Jews dwell. That's why they call our people, the, uh, uh, they call where we live the ghettos, which are the desolate cities that the Bible speaks of, right? Because we are the Jews and that's where we currently reside. Now give me Job chapter 16 and start at verse 24. Look at Job chapter 16. It's the book of Job chapter 24 and verse 16. In the dark they dig through houses. He's talking about the time of like the lynches and stuff like that. Right, because what did they do? At nighttime, that's when they came in our houses. Emmett Till is a perfect example. Right, when it got dark, that's when they went and snatched that young brother out. Read. Which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. Which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. Because right after he left that store, they followed that young brother home. And they found out where he lived. And what did they do? They know not the, they know not the light. They know not the light. Because they evil. And they took and they killed their brother. I dropped down to verse 26. Verse 26. 26. That's good. But what we're going into, brother, is the Lord didn't call us black people. He didn't call us African Americans. He didn't call us indigenous. You know what he called the people in this book? I'm going to show you. Like, give me a little straight up. You know what, he, you know what the Lord's special people are called? Let's look at Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, O children of Israel, O children of Israel. Against our people. He called us the children of Israel. He didn't call us niggas. He didn't call us spicks. That's who we are. We're Israelites, brother. You more than likely from the tribe of Judah. Now, if your woman is African American, she would be from the tribe of Judah as well. Right, right? Against the whole family, the whole family, the whole family. Because when you go into the churches, he says it's supposed to be a family. Like, do you, when you go to the churches and when you turn on the TV, is everybody in there look like a family? They don't. Because I see people like Jimbo. Like, I see people like Mat uh, uh, Matthias down there, man. Right. Right, right? Which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known. You only have I known. He says he's only known our people, read. Right? Of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. Right, why do you think that we the only ones suffering? Right, why we, look, and this is, this is my thing. Right, if Jesus loved everybody, why are we the only ones dying? Why are we the only ones that ain't getting no love? If God loved everybody, why are we at the bottom? He said that he was going to punish us for our iniquities. That's why we are the people in the lowest state. Because we got to pay for the sins that we committed. But if committing those sins is what got us into the situation, then what should we do to get us out of this situation? I get it. And what do we got to do to get ourselves out? Give me Judah chapter 5 and verse 21. We're going to show you what we got to do to get out of this situation. Brother, we ain't even finished teaching, brother. She got time, though. It's Saturday, man. True, true. All right, she's telling you ain't got to be nowhere. Yeah, it. Go ahead. Put on front. Take care, man. Y'all can take care All right, man. You see what that Judah? You see what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, read it, read it for the camera. Huh. The book of Judah, chapter 5, and verse number 21. But if there be any iniquity, so like it, but if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. Let my Lord now pass by. Let their Lord defend them. Let's the most high defend us, man. So if we want to we we reverse our situation, we got to start picking the command. Right. I explain right. it simple. Right, give me the book, uh, I think I want Revelation. Give me 13 and 9. Book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 9. Bring it out. If any man have an ear, let him hear. 
He that leadeth into captivity, he that leadeth into captivity, shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience, here is the patience, here is the patience and the faith of the saint. Because you gotta have patience to go through the and you gotta have patience to go through the things that we go through in order to get this type of riches. Like, give me Luke chapter 17 and verse uh, 20. Like, give me Luke 17 chapter verse number 20. Because like, it's not easy. Like, this truth ain't hard. Like, the Lord never said that it was gonna be easy. But he did say it was gonna be the truth. I right, read that. The book of Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. Right and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God coming not with observation. The kingdom of God coming not with observation. I got five seconds for y'all brothers. Brothers with the lot. I got five seconds for the Bible. Five seconds for y'all brothers. Hey, come on to our bro. We got time. I wish our nationality. All right. What? And we're about to see. Huh? You know what I'm saying? I know who you ask. Come here real quick. I want you to put your hand on this speaker right here. Now, is that the same color? It ain't. Bro, you the same color as the speaker? It ain't that dark, man. Come on. All right, so why do we call ourselves black? Right, if my skin is not black, why do I call myself black? Right, who told us to call ourselves black? White people told us to call ourselves black. What do we call ourselves? Give me 2 Corinthians 11 and 22. I'm going to show you what we call that. 2 Corinthians 11 chapter and the 22nd verse. You got that? Come on. 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 22. Are they Hebrews? Are they Hebrews? So am I. We call ourselves Hebrews, read. Are they Israelites? So am I. We Hebrew Israelites, man. Right? Hebrew is just the language and Israelite is what you are. So when somebody asks you what your nationality is, you gotta tell them, listen, I'm an Israelite, man. Right? Because black is just a color. It's a color in a crayon box. Do you see anybody going around saying, yeah, I'm, I'm, my nationality is pink, my nationality is orange? But why we got to be the ones to say that our nationality is a color? Because I can't take a plane back to the land, a plane back to the land of black. So we gotta figure out who we are and where we're from. Give me Galatians chapter four, verse 26. Right, so our nationality, oh, we're the Israelites, brother. That's your nationality, right? And this is our home, 4 and 26. Look at Galatians chapter four, verse 26. Yeah. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Yeah. Jerusalem is our homeland, and that's our motherland. Israel, but you got another nationality living in Israel right now. And we ain't at home. Come on, Scarlett, you gotta go. Oh, you got five seconds. I'm gonna give you a couple more scriptures. But it's, it's, uh, yeah, read John 19 and 1. Look at John chapter 19 and verse 1. Yeah. This is going into Christ. If you know Christ is a so called black man, yeah, Christ lived through the same exact things that we live through today. Uh, because what happened, y'all know about George Floyd or the, uh, Brother Trayvon Martin? Uh, what, was he, what did he do to get, to, to get killed? Nothing, right? Christ went through the same exact thing. Right, read that. Look at John chapter 19, verse 1. Yeah. Then Pilate, therefore, Pilate was a white man. Right, read. So Jesus and scorched him. And scorched him. What did Christ do to get scorched? He didn't do nothing. He just came back to help his people. And because he wanted to help his people, another nationality hated him. Right? And that's the same exact way that we live in today. So if everybody hates us, should you gather around the people that hate you? You should get around the people that love you, right? Who are the people that love your people? The people on the sign, brother. Other Israelites are the only people that can love Israel. Right. Like, give me Psalm chapter 133 and verse 1. Like, give me the book of Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Right? Psalm chapter 133 and verse 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in, together in unity. To dwell together in unity. It's a good thing for our people to dwell together in unity. But when we usually get together, give me Deuteronomy 28 and 54, you can drop that. When we usually get together, what happens? When black people usually get together, what happens? Huh? You know, like usually, like if you go to a party or something like that, like everybody down here, we usually pop off. What usually happen? Shootings and stuff, right? I right, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you, very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother. This is going into the crime that I was just talking about. Because we only get into it with each other. As if we the ones who oppress ourselves. 
And you gonna hate your brother for no reason, because he like your shoes, or he like your Jordans, and he wanna take them off off you, man. Now give me Job 20 and 24. Job chapter 20 and verse 24. Yeah. He shall flee from the iron weapon. He shall flee from the iron weapon. Next thing you know, the brother up pole, man. He said, what? So, Mom Scarlett, all right, we gotta leave, brother. This is when you're an Israelite, you gotta keep the name. Right, right. I'm right. I know when nobody called him because I didn't see him anymore. But you did it. You did a horrible job at faking that, man. But it's love, though, man. Now, what's going on, fam? What's going on, brother? What's your nationality? So, uh, what? What's your nationality? Hispanic and Native American. So, what's wrong with your father? Uh, Native. I said, you can try again. Uh, Those are Genesis before you left New Genesis before you left. Give me Lamentations chapter 5 and verse 3. Because what happened to the Native American? So what? Sergio. Bahuda. 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 If you take the man out of the household, the woman is going to fall in line. Right, so they figured, listen, if I do that to the Native Americans, I can have a complete control over the woman. Right, dude. Our mothers are as widows. We have drunk in our water for money. We have drunk in our water for money. Y'all own all of the land that's in America. Now y'all got to pay water bills. Is that fair? That's like if you buy a house and you still got to pay rent. In it. That's essentially what they're making y'all do. Right, Reed? Our wood is sold out to us. Our wood is sold out to us. Now they sell y'all y'all wood as if all of this land wasn't charged. And then they force you into reservations and they tell y'all you need to be happy about that in a couple of casinos when you own all of the Americas, all of the farmland, all of the gold. But you're supposed to be happy with a sliver of what was a mystery to yours. Is that fair, brother? That's not fair, huh? I get that. The book of Genesis chapter 49 and verse 19. Oh. Yeah, a troop shall overcome him. Right, so when you deal with the Bible, the Bible doesn't say Native Americans. It doesn't say Indigenous Americans. It won't say Chippewa, Cherokee, or anything of that matter. Right? It deals with tribes, just how the Native Americans did. But our tribes are named a little different. So with you being a Native American, you are more than likely to be tribe again. Right. Read that again. Yeah, a troop shall overcome him. Right. It's prophesied in the Bible that a troop is going to overcome all people. I go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and start verse 48. I read. But he shall overcome at the last. But he shall overcome at the last. He's going to overcome at the last, right? Because John people ended up fighting back. Did you got that? I read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flight. What is America known to be? What is, what is America's like? Symbol. Power. It has power, but what is what, what animal represents power? The eagle. The eagle. Right, we go again. As swift as the eagle flies. So he says he's gonna send another nation from the other side of the earth as swift as the eagle flies. Right? All right. right. And America are the only people in America and Mexico, but Mexico was founded by the Spaniards, right. which were also white people. Two different countries founded by the same people using the same animal, which is what we go again. As swift as the eagle flies, which is the eagle. I read. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Y'all speak any of the languages that we have in, here in America before that? Y'all did it, man. I read. A nation of your counselors. We shall not regard the person of the old. They care about y'all elders and y'all y'all tribes. They did it. I read. Nor to favor to the young. They didn't care who they put to death. They had a mission that they came over here to do, and they completed that mission. Not regarding even human life, man. But did the Lord say Native American? Did he say uh, Indian? Uh, what about indigenous? Uh, what did he call you? I'm going to show you that. Read that. It's the book of Deuteronomy 29 and verse 1. These are the words of the covenant. The covenant is just talking about the promise. And this entire book. And who was it for? Read. Which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. With the children of Israel. With the children of Israel. What's your nationality, brother? Ah, oh, we just went through it, man. If your nationality would be an Israelite, if that's your nationality, right. more than likely from the tribe of Gad, man. But you need Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. The thing is, right, it's not just simple enough to know that you were Israelite. 
Right, it seems that you need to do is it, isn't it? Right, you got that? Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 5. Yeah. Chapter 4 and verse 5. Yeah. It reads, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. I have taught you statutes and judgments. That truth is talking about the laws that the Lord gave you. And judgments are the things that are going to happen for us not keeping those statutes, right? Right now, our people are catching the judgments because we didn't obey the statute. So what we gotta do in order to get this judgment up off us is go back to the statutes and commandments of the Most High. Now right. drop down to verse six. Verse six, keep their forward and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation. It says that when we keep the commandments, that's gonna make us wise to all of the nation. Do you know any commandments, brother? What's up? That's more. That's, that's, that's not a thing. But I get what you mean. You're talking about like adultery. Yeah. Right, so adultery is when a man sleeps with another man's wife, or when a woman that is married sleeps with another man. But if a man goes and sleeps with another woman, there is nothing wrong with that. That's the Bible. That's, that's the Bible. Even when you pay attention to the like, and I'm going to break this down to a science. When you look at a lion, it's one male lion, and then he got how many females? Exactly. And when you look at fish, when you look at any animal, but when it comes down to our people, we are the only ones that have to be monogamous. The only ones that can't, you know what I'm saying? So it's going against our order, our, our natural nature. But, so that's not a thing. We were, we were meant to reproduce, exactly. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But that's, that's, uh, this used to be the two commandments, right? All right, so we're going to give you a couple. I'll give you numbers 1538. Look at Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Yeah. Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fridges in the borders of their gardens throughout their generation. You see, what do you see at the bottom of everybody's shirt out here? Yeah. You know what these are? They fringes. Right? This is what he's talking about right here. Right? He says that we gotta do what? We did it again. That they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. We gotta put them on the borders of our garments. You know, on the bottom of our shirts, how that brother has over there, right? He has his TCs hanging down. Like, both of those be off, right? Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Right, this blue just represents royalty, right? Because we're a royal people, we're a royal nation, kings and priests, right? Read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. And do them, and do them, and do them. Because what usually happens, you got kids. What happens if you tell your kids to do something? They don't, right? So the Lord says, listen, I want you to put this on the floor in your garments as a reminder to do the things that I told you to do. And so that in itself is a commandment. Like what you do? Medicaid chapter 11 and verse 7. In the swan. In the swan. In the swan. You know what swan is? I'm a swan. I'm a pastor. Right? The bacon. You eat bacon, brother? You bacon? You bacon? Yeah. You bacon? Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Yes. All three. All right. So he divided the hook and be cloven footed, yet he took not the gun. He is unclean unto you. He is unclean unto you. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch. The Lord says that we can't eat pork at all. And so even with it being sometimes he, we gotta throw that stuff away from you. Right, now we also like to eat other stuff, right? We eat. These shall you eat of all that are in the water. Who are who are people who usually like to eat from the water? Fish. Right, fish. I mean, what types of fish? Do you catfish? Yeah. Uh, what about some kind of lobster? Lobster. I think I think that's just uh, Judah that eat catfish. These shall you eat of all that are in the water. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters. In the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. The Lord says that everything that comes from the water is fair game, right? As long as it has fins and scales. Let me ask you, lobster, do they have fins and scales? They don't. I can read them. Verse 11, they shall... They shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye should not eat of their flesh. Ye should not eat of their flesh. He told us not to eat it at all. I see you willing to never eat lobster again for the Lord. Are you willing to put on a for the Lord? 
I don't pray to the most high. I'm going to ask you one more time, what's your new nationality, brother? Are you no longer you know, in Israel? I don't pray to the most high. Yeah, we're good. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse number 8. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy works. But the seventh day is the seventh day of the Lord. Like, which day do we usually go to church? Right? Uh, Sunday the seventh day of the week. Today. Uh, but the Lord says the seventh day of the week is the Sabbath day of the Lord. Right? And in that day, we can't do no work. Right, you got Exodus 31? Okay, Exodus chapter 31 and verse 13. No. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord that do a sanctified. Verse 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defiles it shall surely be put to death. Because everybody that defiles the Sabbath shall still be put to death. Right. Right. That's why when you pay attention to the, the, the main day that our people die, it's on Friday night and Saturday night. Because we reaping the judgments of breaking the Sabbath. Right? Right. So what we got to do, and what's best for our people is to come back to this Bible and be who we're supposed to be. Right? And we should be an Israelite from the tribe of death. That makes sense, brother? You got any questions? I got you. You gonna give you another command? Right, read. Seventeen. Yeah. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter seventeen, verse fifteen. Yeah. You vote, brother. You vote. Oh, I'll pray. Are right, we gonna read this anyway? Thou shalt any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Right, it's actually a sin of vote, right? So the, the the man that actually rules over our people, he has to be God chosen. Read. One from among thy brethren, one from among thy brethren, one from among our people. Because what happens when we choose somebody that's not from our people? Or we choose the wrong person that's not God sent from our people. Right, read. Shalt thou set king over thee, thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. Nor cause people to return to Egypt. That word Egypt just means bondage. Because when we, cho when we choose the wrong, give me uh, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 16. Oh. When we choose the wrong leader over our people, who ends up suffering? We do. Right? But then it exalts the other nations. So when it comes to people that we choose to rule over us, it shouldn't have to hurt for us to increase in any way. Right? We do. The book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 16. Yeah. He shall know them by their fruits. He shall know them by their fruits. You know, so you know, you can know the wrong people by the fruits, or the fruits meaning the, the actions that they produce. Right, read. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? But what is going into grapes don't grow in a thorn bed. Meaning it's not supposed to hurt in order for you to get anything good. But every time our people want to increase in anything, we always have to suffer first. That's because we're choosing the wrong leaders over our people. Right. And so no more voting. Well, you don't vote, but all praise to the most high. You don't vote, and no more voting, brother. Have you got any questions? All praise to the most high. You are easy like that, it's the again. We got to keep going. How you doing? Right. Somebody get his brother. He, he don't need a fly. Right. You got to remember that, brother. I got y'all here. Uh, give me uh, give me Mark chapter twenty three. Give me Mark twenty three. I started this one. It's like another Mark uh, Matthew twenty three. Look at Matthew chapter twenty three, verse one. Hey, brother, you got to start having fun with those white women. You know when I end up. Right, read. Right. Then said Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, said, The scribes and the Pharisees said to Moses, See, all their form, whatsoever they be, be you observe. That observe and do. That observe and do. He's talking about the wicked people. Like the wicked, the wicked bullish that he set up amongst our people. Right, like TD snakes. Right, uh, what's the, what's the brother name? Who said that he was lying about uh, ties the whole time? Yeah, careful will take your dog. Right, we now observe and do, but do not eat after their words. Uh, do not be, do not eat after their words. For one, we don't even need to be listening to them, because at least the Pharisees was teaching the Lord. But the things that they teach you now is so far gone from what the message of the Bible is that it's bad. Verse twelve. I read. 
and whosoever shall exalt him, and whosoever shall exalt himself, shall be obeyed. Go to 11. Verse 11. May he that is greatest among you shall be your serf, the man that is greatest among us. And that's what we set up to do. Because a lot of times we think that we, we out here supposed to be the mightiest teacher, do the mightiest breakdowns. We're out here to be a servant to the people. Everything that you need, I have to be able to provide. That is your job as an Israelite man in this truth and a brother in the people. Right? And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be obeyed. Because once you get into putting yourself over the needs of your people, that's when you get destroyed. That's when our people get to destroy, man. That's when you get to teaching things to your own very healthy needs, man. Hey, would you be a so-called Latino brother? Come talk to your brothers, man. Hey, come on, man. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. This is for hard, man. Hey, we... And he that shall humble himself, and he that shall so so humble himself. A man that understands that he's a servant. A man that understands to love you. Well, I got five seconds for black folk. Five seconds for black love. Hey, brother. Brother with the Gucci. Brother with the Gucci. What's going on, mighty man? This is third yeah, time bro. walking by. Hey, this is third time, man. This, that's Mike Rashid. <laughs> that's Mike Rashid right there. Mike Rashid, you gotta be in the workout to know. He looks just like him though. He look like him. No, he ain't, but he look like him though. He look like a baby version though. <laughs> and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Shall be exalted. Once you understand, like that's that's when it comes to sincerity in this group. Once you understand, y'all got five seconds for y'all brothers. Brother with the backpack. Brother with the knife. We is not trying to talk to you anyway. <laughs> we not trying to talk to you anyway, man. But hey, that's hey, but that's a good that's a good spot right there, man. When you know something not for you, don't listen. What's going on, brother? You got five seconds for your people, man. You got five seconds of black folk. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. I don't like the way he threw up that thumbs up. He's a little sweet. A little saucy. <laughs> Come on, fam. Y'all got spice. Black people have been turning us down all day. Does anybody love black folks enough to talk to us in five seconds? Five seconds. Just five. five seconds. That's all we want. Five seconds, family. Come on, family. Come on, sister. All praises to the Lord. I'm good on time? All right, so let me ask you. Right? Most of the time, people of our people of our nationality call ourselves what? African American, right? Or black, or Negro. Why do we have 50 different names that we call ourselves? Yeah, I did, and the reason that I did that is because if I called you by your actual nationality, if I called you Yahweh God, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, you don't. So what I have to do is I have to speak to you in a language that you can understand. Right. First, I call you by saying, "Hey, black, hey, black people, come over here and talk to me." By the time that you walk off, you don't understand what your true nationality is. Yes. Now, when it comes to being black, it's a color in a crayon box. It's not a land that we can go back to. But when you got Caucasians, they got Caucasians they can go back to. And when you got Japanese, they got Japan. When it comes to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we don't truly know who we were before we were oppressed. Right. Now, do y'all read the Bible? You don't, you do, you don't. All right, so when it comes to the Bible, y'all, y'all, in school, you got history books, right? Those history books are usually about who? Give me Amos 3. They're usually about white people. Now, when any time black people got something, who do white people usually do? Take it and say that it's for themselves. That's right. the same exact thing that happened with this Bible. Right. This is our history book. Right. Because the black, white people wanted what we had so bad, they took it. And they say that this book was for them. We're going to show you that. Do that. Look at Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Yeah. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. O children of Israel. I hear that? Now, what is he, who is he talking to? I read it again. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Talking to the children of Israel or Israel. Right, read. Against the whole family. Against the whole family. The whole family. Right, so the church is supposed to be a family. It's supposed to be a family union. When you go to church, don't you see some people that don't look like you? You see some people that's a little different. Right? That's because of the lies that's been told and because our history has been stolen and taken on by somebody else. Right. Which I brought up from the land of Eden, saying, You only have I known 
You only have I known. Is that I have only known this family out of work. Of all the families of the earth. Out of every nationality on the planet earth, right? He said that I've known one. Now we usually say our father would try to heaven, right? So if children don't listen to their parents, what usually happens? Is it a punishment, right? Right, read. Therefore, I will punish you. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. We didn't punish because we disobeyed our Heavenly Father. God don't love everybody. That's what he's saying. But he didn't call us African Americans. He didn't, you got that in Leviticus? He didn't call us uh, uh, black people. What did he call us? Children of Israel. I read that in Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 17. Uh, and I will set my face against you, uh -huh. and you shall be slain before your enemy. He says that we're going to be slain. Who's, the, who's getting killed at a mass rate? Us. Not only us, but you got the Hispanics and Native Americans as well, right? right. Read. They that hate you shall reign over you. Now, who has shown that they've hated us ever since we've been in America? White people, right? But it says that they shall what? Read it again. They that hate you shall reign over you. Ain't they the people that's running our stuff, though? They run our lands. They even control our businesses because we have to govern our businesses by their rules and regulations. Right. Right, read. And you shall flee when none pursue with you. Right. And next time, every time we hear the, the cherry tops or we heard a car, the police sirens, what do we do? We take up out of there. And they're not even after us. But this didn't say I was talking to African Americans or blacks. He said he was talking to who again? For some reason, this right, like what you got? see it. Yeah. So I, 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 you see around it up? This, this is, is the thing. In verse number 16, no. how, how did black people get over into this place? 16. So what? We were stolen, right? I read that. God. God. Verse number 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. This word Egypt is not talking about a literal Egypt. It's an American word in the bondage for slavery. Right, so it says that I'm going to take you stolen, right? And I'm gonna bring you with the bondage, but how? How do we get over here? Read it. With ships! With ships! With ships! You just said that, sis. But that's actually a prophecy. It was prophesied that our people were going to go into slavery with ships. Right! By the way we're up, I speak unto thee, and thou shalt see it no more again. We ain't been home. Are we still here? We still gotta work for the crumbs of the society. Look at these buildings and businesses out here. We don't own none of this. Then we have to be happy with t-shirt shops, cleaning businesses, and we are the people that built the foundation of America. Right. Right? And then before that, my brothers and sisters were in this place. Right. Right? We are getting the least amount in the society, right, Reed? And then you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and for bond women, and no man shall buy you. The bond just means we're doing Because ain't nobody got us out of the situation. Right. But you had said that we were stolen, right? So where were we stolen from, do you know? I'm going to show you. I read this. Book of Genesis chapter 40 and verse 15. Yeah. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. What? Out of the land of the Hebrews. Stolen from the land of the Hebrews. You know where our actual home is? Now it's not Africa. Now, our people were dwelling now, since you got to get your point. Our, our, our people were dwelling in Africa. But what that doesn't account for is migration. Like you got white people living in South Africa. They ain't going to say that they're not white. They won't even right. say that they're African. You got Chinese people living in Africa as well. So just because you live in somewhere, that don't make that your nationality, right? Right. right so just like how we live in America, right, we're not actually um, indigenous Americans. We are people that were migrated over here by the force of slavery. So where are we originally from? I read that. Book of Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. No! But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. It says Jerusalem, I read. Which? is the mother of us all, which is the mother of us all. We actually from Jerusalem, we from Israel. That's our two nationalities. Right. That makes sense, sis. That makes sense. So what's our nationality? I'm asking. Oh yeah, go burn it. Hold it. It's like, no. right, but it's not enough to just know that you're Israel, right? Because y'all parents, y'all parents, you are in school? And so as a parent, it's usually a job that you gotta do, right? You can't just have kids and not do nothing. So as an Israelite, it's a task that the Lord said at hand. I read that. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. No. And now Israel. Ain't that Israelites, right? We just identified that. He's talking to us. Come on. What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So that is a, a requirement. Right? Just how if Shaq wants to play in the NBA, he got to be able to bounce a ball. 
right? Just how if you want to be the president of the United States, you've got to be able to make decisions. As an Israelite, there is something that you've got to be able to do, right? right. Read verse 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To keep the commandments of the Lord. As Israelites, it's our job to keep the commandments of the Lord. Right. Do y'all know any commandments? You say you know a few? Pick them up. You got the floor. If you want the mic, you got it. You know what? You know what? Right, anything else? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 5. I'm going to give you all a couple. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. No! The woman shall not wear that which retaineth unto a man. The woman shall not wear that which retaineth unto a man. Please. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What do women usually wear that men don't wear? What do, what do women usually wear that men don't wear? Dresses, right? So it says that a, if a man ain't supposed to wear what a woman wear, then a woman ain't supposed to wear what a man wear. What do men usually wear? Pants, right? So according to the Bible, I was not supposed to wear dresses. Right. And the reason that that is, I was hot earlier today. I don't know if y'all was out here. But what usually happens when it gets too hot? You get to sweating, you get to doing bacteria. Now, I have a closed cavity being a man, but a woman has an open cavity. What happens if that sweat and that bacteria gets into it? You get yeast infected. For the Lord, for that, said for that cause, let her breathe. Wear a dress. That makes sense? Y'all willing to wear dresses for the most high? Y'all willing to wear dresses for the Lord? You willing to wear dresses for the Lord? Huh? What about you, sis? You ain't say nothing. You say you can do You willing to wear dresses? All praise to the most high. Right? What do y'all, what are our diets like as a people? What do we usually eat? Uh, food. Now, what type of what type of food is that? Soul food. Now, what's what's the go ahead, little man? Chicken. Ain't nothing wrong with chicken, uh, but it's something else that our people love to eat that ain't no good for us. Of course. Now, give me Deuteronomy 14 and 8. This is Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse number 8. In the swine, because it's divided the hoof, yet you not the cut, it is unclean unto you. Work is swine. Uh, huh? Yeah, it says Greek, you read it? Uh, you shall not eat. Thereof, it's like it. You shall not eat of the flesh. Or it says that we're not supposed to eat that. Stuff. Like that's why we be having high blood pressure. We be having gout. If you need some shit, you can stand right here so that they don't feel like they're going to feel good. Right? Can you hear uh, it? And neither shall so like the Lord touch the dead part. These you shall eat of all that are in the water. So what do our women used to look? And it's usually the women that used to like to eat this, right? What do y'all usually love to eat that come from the water? What's, what's going on, person? You got seafood. What type of seafood? Go ahead, mighty man. She actually just said something. Crab legs, shrimp, right? Lobster, huh? fish. Now, what's, what's a specific fish that we like to eat? Uh, not, salmon would be one, but you also got catfish, right? We like, see, that's two to different. Y'all be eating But let's see what the Lord said about some of the stuff from the sea. Uh, and it reads. All that have fins and scales shall ye eat. Uh -huh. And whatsoever have not fins and scales, ye may not eat. Right, now I'm gonna ask. Do, do, brother. Brother with the uh water, do, water, water, water. I got a question for you. All right, do crab do crabs got fins and scales? No, they bad. don't, right? Yeah. Now what about y'all sisters? Do crabs got fins and scales? They don't. Now what about shrimp? What about you, sis? You think that fancy scales? Yeah, when I when I teach them the whole Pokemon, it's gonna be a nice Huh? Scales. Read. Yeah. They don't. I read. Read. Ah. What do you read? Huh? It is unclean to you. Okay, come. Huh? Huh? And whatsoever have not fancy scales, you may not eat. Since that we can't eat this thing. Y'all willing to give up crab legs and shrimp for the most high for the Lord? You want? Yeah, pork, hey, pork, ain't nothing wrong with beef, but I'm talking about you let it, you let it shrimp though. You willing to give up shrimp for the Lord? All praise to the Lord. Clap it up for the system, man. Oh. Right? But with that, as a brother that's much more mightier than me, that's going to come out and give you a, a more in-depth understanding than I ever could. Oh. With that, we're going to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, but Shema Mashiach, I'm going to like Yahweh, Come Yashra! Come Yashra! Come Yashra!